It's homecoming Saturday for Alcorn State versus Grambling State University. And I'm going to tell you right now, when I say the house was packed, the house was so packed, man. You got folks everywhere. Alcorn side is packed. You got Grambling State side is packed. You got a whole bunch of chatter going on out there talking about how they're going to get out here and they're going to take, they're going to beat down Alcorn State again because they should never, they should never ever put Alcorn State, should never put Grambling State University on their, on their schedule as their homecoming game. Hey guys, this thing was so crazy. I got I got into I got people telling me their score predictions for the game. I got fans outside the stadium talking trash. I got stands in the stadium talking trash. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give it all to you guys because you know what? This was one fun, field packed weekend. I truly enjoyed myself at Alcorn State this weekend at the reservation. Also, and I, oh, hey, guess what? And I did a video with Swacking the Food that's going to come out on their platform. So you guys make sure that you check that out as well, okay? And remember, if you haven't tapped in with them already, please make sure you tap in with those guys. Those are some phenomenal young men, and they're doing some great things over there. Also, don't forget to tap in with uh, Coach Simmons as well and Cut Day Sports. If you haven't done that already, also, you know, he got the bomb, the bomb edits over there. So you got to make sure you get that. But guys, we're going to go ahead and tap on into this video right now, talking about this Alcorn State versus Grambling State homecoming game. Man, when I tell you this thing was crazy, it was crazy. It's your favorite coach back at it again. Ten toes down, about to tell you how it all went down. This is Tomorrow Leaf Sports Network with your host, Coach Walker. If you're new to the channel, please like, share, subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you get all upcoming videos. And for all my leaders out there, y'all know the drill. Y'all know the routine. Hey, if you haven't done so already, hit that notification bell so you can get all upcoming videos. Like, comment, and share these videos as well. And not, hey, do me one huge favor. Tap in a friend or two and tell them to come on in. It's number positive vibes over here. We're just having a good time talking about HBCU sports. And guess what, guys? If you haven't followed us on social media, please do so now. The links are listed down below in the description. So without further ado, Coach is going to go ahead and tap on in this thing right now. Across some Grambling and Alcorn State fans who gave their predictions before the game. Check them out. Say that one more time. Let's go going to be 30-28. 30-28? They're going to get on 20? And y'all say y'all going to do what to them again? Yes. All right. Yeah, I see that. Back in the red Hey, put him on up. Put, put, hold on, hold on. There you go, right there. Matthew. All right. All right. I got the Matthew family right here. Hey, they get, they're going to get that. Hey, they say they get two of the day, guys. Get All right, I'm sitting out here with Arcanite. Out here watching this game, Mr. Young. Mr. Young, I might as well be playing. Hey, <laughs> tell these good people, tell, tell these good people a little bit about yourself, man. Well, I went to Alcorn State University back in 1972. All right. I went four years, got my, my, my BS degree. All right. And I liked it so much, I got a job working for Fox Studio, but I had to give it up to come back and get my master at Alcorn, played in the band, and took over the Chile. All right. Hey, right. so go ahead. Right now, right now, I work with the Chile for Southern University, Grandma State University, Alcorn State University, Jackson State, and I'm trying to get in contact with Mississippi Banner State. All right. I'm all about the HBCU. Hey, man. Yeah. Okay, well, let, let me tell you. Okay, so you say you're ready to get up out of here, right? Right. All right, so. Score right now is 21. 21-6. 21-6. 21-6 in the third. What's your final prediction of this game? Uh, 34. They, they, they'll, they'll break 30, 34. 34. Rambler may not score again. Oh! Uh -huh. All right. Rambler may not score again. All right. Hey, Mr. Young, it's been a pleasure talking with you, brother. All right, thanks a lot, man. All right, thank you. Y'all check him out on, on YouTube. All right, All right, man, appreciate All right. you. All right, have a good one. The game had a bunch of penalties that kept drives going throughout the game. I mean, these penalties could have either helped, team, helped the team win the game outright where they were able to go ahead and put more points on the board, or it could have tilted the scale to let the other team win the game where they need to score more points, put more points on the board for them to get the W. It almost went that way. Guys, we got, hey, I keep telling everybody, we got to make sure we got that mental mindset. We, we're doing the things that we need to do to make sure that we don't give games away. It came real close today, but I'm going to be real with you. Uh, Alcorn State, they came out the gate fast today. They let it be known, hey, look. This is not going to be like the past homecoming where y'all came in here and kicked our teeth in. I believe the last time these two teams played, I think it was in two, 2019, where they was playing, they was playing in the hole, in which uh, Alcorn State had a real nasty taste in their mouth, which they said they, they felt as if they was uh, 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 duped in that game. Gonna let, they were not going to allow it to happen today. They came out, they scored 21 points in the first half. Honestly, my personal opinion, I believe Alcorn State, they left prior another uh 13 points 13 to 17 points on the field uh, i truly believe they did do that because a lot of drives were stalled because of 
a um, couple of crazy play calls, not to mention penalties and drop passes. Just, just say it, guys. Hey, y'all know I'm going to call it straight. I told you guys that when we were out there on the yard uh, uh, last night. I said I'm going to call it straight. So y'all know Coach Coach keeping it a buck with you. But stick with me, though. Stick with me. But, I'm a, hey, I got to give it up to uh, the Charles Pringle. Man, look here. That young man caught a daggone pass, boy. Took that sucker to the house, 45-yard touchdown pass in the first quarter. That bad boy was so pretty. I'm like, hey, Felix Trigger Man Harbor put that thing on a rope. And like I said, as soon as he came out the break, uh, it was right there. He's off to the races. Um, but you got to give the credit to the to the big uglies up front. Uh, number 62, Michael uh, Moment. Number 53, Wanye Morris. Number 74, Columbus Willis. Number 77, Joseph Milburn. Number 72, Will Reddy. And I mean, like I said, they were up front battling with those, with the Trish Militia over there from Grambling State University. They weren't backing down at all. And I mean, when I say this was like a, this was a slobber knocker that went on for real. I mean, it was knock down, drag out for real. Where these guys, I mean, they was hitting each other so hard. You see a couple of them, they roll over, they sliding on the ground, trying to pick themselves up to continue to keep playing in this game. That's how, that's how bad both of these teams really wanted it. Um, you had the, the, the Trish Militia up front for Grambling State. You had number 44, Blake Thomas, number 91, uh, Cameron Richardson, and number 99, and then number 48, Brian Powell. Number 99, Martavius Dots. This one, young man, I got, I, I got to talk about this young man from uh, Grambling State University. Number 48, Brian Powell. When I tell you that young man, his energy was so infectious sitting out there watching him in the stands. It was like, man, this dude, this, this young man did not believe in quit. It was like, yo, this game ain't over yet. And I'm talking about, when I say wired, I'm talking about he was wired. Like, yo, we got we got to get at these folks. We, we got to get at these folks. There's no way in the world we're going to walk out of here with them getting this W. The competitive spirit that was coming out, all of them. I'm talking about, I ain't talking about just him. I'm talking about on both sides of the ball was just phenomenal. Guys, hey, Coach Walker, appreciate y'all. Y'all both teams put on one hell of a show. I'm not even going to lie to you. You guys went out there and left it all out there on the field. But um, let me get back to it. Grambling, like I said, Grambling fans, they made it clear. It ain't over with till the end of the fourth quarter. Grambling fans will have me give me the business because I didn't record a play that they just had. Check them out. Go, go, talk that talk. What y'all say now? Huh? Fourth quarter. That's when it's over. Okay, fourth quarter. Okay. Okay. I'm, hey, I'm just trying to prepare some things. That's all. Y'all don't forget. All right? <laughs> Check, check this out. I, I'm just telling you, they, they made it clear right off the rip. Now, the big ugly for Alcorn State, they definitely was out there hustling and blocking their butts off, just like Grambling State, big uglies was as well. Opening up those holes and protecting for their quarterbacks. Uh, like I stated before, quarterback Felix Triggerman Harper, he threw the ball, threw the ball 23 times, completing 15 for 150 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception. And he also ran for uh, a rushing touchdown as well. But you know what? The Braves, the Braves running game, when I tell you the Braves running game is so sick. I, listen, the Braves ran for 207 yards with Nico Duffy leading the way with 20 carries for 142 yards. And Stafford Anderson had 20, uh, excuse me, Stafford Anderson had nine carries for 43 yards. Listen, Stafford Anderson and Nico Duffy both broke big plays. I was looking for both of them to go ahead and punch those in, and they didn't. Um, and like I said, guys, I know that heat day. That heat is disrespectful. I, I salute salute both teams out there playing in that heat because that heat was disrespectful. But like I said, the player the players out there definitely for Grambling, they were playing for one another. You got to give them that. You got to give them the credit on that. And like I said, again, the play calling and things of that nature. When you look at, I, I look at body language of players trying to see exactly you know some of the things that some people may miss. I'm like, you know, my thing is I want to see what the mindset is when it get when the game gets tight. Where is everybody at? What's the mindset? I'm watching the grambling players. They're over there. They're bouncing around on the sideline like, yo, we got this thing in the back. We can come on and win this game. And, man, when I tell you, freshman, I got to give freshman quarterback Noah Bodden, I got to give him his props. The young man stood in there. He stood tall as long as he could. I didn't quite understand. Well, I do understand why they did the – Switching out of the uh, quarter, Alder Clark, Alder Clark, Alder Clark is the mobile quarterback between the two. So you already know Alder Clark. He's gonna get out there. He's gonna RPO, and nine times out of ten, he may keep it for himself, take off and run. And a lot of times, what ended up happening was the uh, Braves, Alcorn State, they were sitting on that, and he he took some he took some punishing blows out there as well. But like I say, I got to give give it up to the Grambling State Big Uglies, uh, number sixty seven, Chris Shanock. Number six is Chris Shanock Jr. Number 66, Cameron Davis. Number 77, excuse me, number 74, 
Kyle Davis, number 65, Jordan Igelfos. Uh, like I said, they were not afraid to go back and forth with Alcorn State at all. And like, you know, the fans made me well aware continuously throughout the game. Coach, you about to sit here and watch a battle. These two teams, they're going to bring the best out of one another because guess what? One don't like losing to the other. So it's going to be what it's going to be. And I saw exactly that. And I, like I said, I got to take my hat off to both teams. They really left it out there on the line of scrimmage. Um, no about it. He did throw the ball 27 times, completing 10 for 105 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Alden Clark threw the ball five times, completing five for 67 yards and one touchdown. He also ran the ball 10 times for 64 yards. But again, the Tigers came out, like I said, the Tigers scored 14 unanswered points in the second half. Remember, when they went in at halftime, it was 21-6. to Everybody was sitting back like, yeah, we got this, we got this. And boy, when I tell you, them grandma fans got to telling me, coach, this ain't over with yet. This, hey, we it, it ain't over with. Watch, watch it. Ain't over with. Hey, look at y'all. Where y'all focused? with yet. It ain't, the fourth quarter ain't over with yet. They they was making it be known. But like I said, there was a lot of drop balls out there on the field today for both teams where they could have put more points on the board. And like I said, it was just a lot of miscues that was going on. On the Grambling side, the miscues was more so the receivers trying to get the timing yeah. to which quarterback was in the game. Like I said, Clark Clark threw a lot of long balls. Uh, and you had uh, Biden. He was more so trying to throw the intermediate passes as well as trying to dink and dump here and there, catching the cross routes. And it, it, things just weren't there. Uh, and not to mention, uh, I gotta get you gotta give um, you gotta give Alcorn their credit as well because the defense was putting that pressure on them also. So it didn't allow them time to really sit in the pocket to throw the ball. Like I said, if you see somebody coming, you go ahead and put that ball up, and that's what they were doing. I mean, they weren't hesitating on it. They sit there one thousand one, one thousand one thousand two, one thousand three, let it go. I mean, it, it, like I said, that that one that one pass that uh, Clark threw up the sideline, up the right sideline. On uh on the brave side on the brave side of the field for a touchdown that was beautiful I I gotta give gotta give credit it was a beautiful pass but the crazy thing of the game was Grambling State got the ball back and they had the opportunity to drive it guess what they had the same coverage again over there on that young man and you know he got to put the ball up in the air he fumbled the ball and you know what that was the ball game right there but I'm gonna tell it to you like this. Uh, this game went down to the wire. Grambling fans, you know, they let it be known. Hey, the game ain't over with till it's over with. And you got to give them that credit. You got to give them credit for that. I give Alcorn State their props because they were able to get out there, secure their homecoming win. Um, All of the, the chatter that was going on, the, the questionable calls that happened out there on the field. I'm going to tell you now, watching swag football is one thing that I did learn. Any given Saturday, anybody can get touched as far as win, lose, or draw. And that's just real. Depends on, I mean, it, it just depends on the Saturday. You just don't know what might, how things may fall in your way because you might get a team that come out there that's jacked up and just get after you behind that day. You you know, you didn't even expect it. And like things you thought you had fixed, they weren't fixed. And that's just how, that's how swag football goes. Be known right now. I want everybody to understand from the sound of my voice that Gram Gramlin State University is a dangerous damn team, okay? Understand that. Quit thinking. People got to stop thinking that because they got them down by X, Y, and Z amount of points that the game is over. The game ain't over with, man. These guys are fighting to the end. They're fighting to the very end. Now, were there some questionable calls on offense? Yes. Was, this, was, was there a reason why we got away from giving the ball to Darquez? I don't know, but I would love to know why because, like I said, between him, C.J. Russell, and Darquez, Bur uh, Dar Darquez Brutton was not getting getting any more burn as far as running the ball. I mean, it, it, things just didn't make much sense. The, run, the running plays were there for them to do what they needed to do. And I, I kind of feel like Gremlin made this game a lot more difficult than what they needed to. But in the end, uh, Alcorn State got the win. They were able to celebrate their home, come and have a good time. And, you know, I enjoyed myself. I appreciate all of you that, you know, allowed me and my family to enjoy ourselves there with you guys this weekend at your homecoming. Uh, also, salute to a lot of the Gremlin ball players that I got to meet and talk with, you know, out there on the field as well as amongst everybody else. And again, guys, like I said, Coach had a wonderful time, and I appreciate you all. But until next time, if you like the content, if you like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you get all upcoming videos. And remember, be the one and lead.